Binary ionic compounds consist of atoms joined together with ionic bonds. Some examples are sodium fluoride, aluminium phosphide and magnesium chloride. You'll notice that although the word binary means two, binary ionic compounds can have more than two ions. For example, magnesium chloride contains three ions, one magnesium cation with a charge of plus two, and two chlorine anions with a charge of minus one. But there are only two elements present in the compound, magnesium and chlorine. That's why we call it a binary compound. You might already be able to see other patterns here too. In each compound, the first element is a metal, sodium, aluminium and magnesium. And the second element is a non-metal, fluorine, phosphorus and chlorine. And in each case, the ending of the non-metal has been changed to "-ide". So here's a rule to remember about binary ionic compounds. If a binary ionic compound consists of a metal combined with a non-metal, the metal is always named first. The non-metal is named second and the ending of its name is changed to "-ide". So this type of naming compounds is quite simple. The only thing to be mindful of at this level of chemistry is that when we say metal, we're not talking about the transition metals, the big lump of elements in the middle of the periodic table that don't have a group number. There is a slightly different naming system for ionic compounds containing transition metals, which we'll talk about elsewhere. While the naming system for these compounds is quite simple, you'll notice that the chemical formulae don't quite follow the same pattern. While the formula for sodium fluoride is NaF, and aluminium phosphide is ALP, magnesium chloride is written as MgCl2. Why does the Cl have a small number just below, called a subscript? Well, let's review what we know about ions and ionic compounds. Because sodium is in group one of the periodic table, we know that it wants to form a cation with the charge plus one. And because fluorine is in group seven, we know it wants to form an anion with the charge of minus one. Compounds always have a neutral charge. So we need to figure out how many positively charged sodium ions we need on this side to balance the negatively charged fluorine ions on the other side. And the answer is pretty obvious in this case. If we have one lot of plus one, that gives us plus one, and one lot of minus one gives us minus one. These cancel each other out, so our formula must be NaF, one sodium atom with one fluorine atom. But what about magnesium chloride? Well, we know that because magnesium is in group two, it wants to form a cation with a charge of plus two. And chlorine in group seven wants to form an anion with a charge of minus one. If we write Mg2 plus here, remember the metal always comes first, and Cl minus here, once again, we need to figure out how many of each we need so that the positive and negative charges are equal on each side and cancel each other out. One lot of plus two will give us a charge of plus two and two lots of minus one will give us a charge of minus two. They cancel each other out in this combination, and so our formula is MgCl2, meaning there's one magnesium atom and there are two chlorine atoms present in the compound. Let's try another example. This time we want to know the chemical formula for lithium phosphide. Because lithium's in group one, it will form a cation with a plus one charge. And because phosphorus is in group five, it will form an anion with a charge of minus three. Let's look at phosphorus first this time to figure out the formula. One lot of phosphorus will give us a charge of minus three. So how many plus ones do we need to cancel that out? Well, we need three lots of plus one to balance out the minus three. So the formula for lithium phosphide is Li3P. Let's use this same method to work out the formula for aluminium oxide. Aluminium is in group three, so it forms a cation with a charge plus three. And oxygen is in group six, so it forms an anion with a charge minus two. Now, this looks a little trickier because two doesn't go neatly into three. So how many positive aluminium ions do we need to balance out the negative oxygen ions? Well, two lots of plus three will give us plus six. So we now need minus six on the other side. How many lots of minus two will give us minus six? Minus two, minus two, minus two equals minus six. So the answer is three. So we need two aluminium ions and three oxygen ions to give us a neutrally charged compound. So that's how we go about naming and writing chemical formulae for binary ionic compounds containing a metal and a non-metal.
Let's recap. To name a binary ionic compound consisting of a metal combined with a non-metal, the metal is always named first. The non-metal is named second, and the ending of its name is changed to "-ide". To write the chemical formula, use the periodic table to identify what kind of ion the two elements will form. Write the charges for the cation, then the anion. Work out how many of each ion is needed to balance out the positive and negative charges on each side. Write the formula using subscripts to indicate how many ions are present in the compound. Thank you.